Hello everybody, how are you doing? I'm Pokan Joe and as always, appreciate you for coming by, you really cool people. So I have been out of town since video is coming up a little late. Um, I have been in Las Vegas, Nevada for SHOT Show uh, since Thursday and I'll tell you what, I am just absolutely exhausted. Oh my lord. I want you to take New York Comic Con. San Diego Comic Con and C2E2, cram them into Las Vegas. That is about the size of SHOT Show. It was ridiculous and it was a great honor to be able to sit there and speak at two of the events as a speaker. Uh, very honored by that. Met tons of great people out there. Saw some people with some real innovation, real entrepreneurs, and it was just a blast. And of course, I stopped by a comic book shop called Maximums in Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm going to be honest, those are some really cool people. I apologize for not getting a video out on it but again I literally had to do it during lunch because there was just so much there during that time but that's not why you're here you're here to see what comic books I picked up Wednesday maybe a quick review on them if you want a longer review on this or different opinions on it please check out blast it or stash it Sunday night 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Myself, Drew Manchu, uh, Huey's Comics, Midwest Comic Guy, and Spectacular Spider Grandpa. We're all going to go up there and we're going to talk about maybe not all these, but at least the main ones and kind of give our personal views on them. Why would you be interested in that? I don't know. Maybe you didn't pick up the comic book. Maybe you want to know something about the comic before you pick it up. Definitely, we all have different opinions and views on a lot of this stuff. Some of the stuff we read, sometimes the other guys didn't. It uh, doesn't really matter. Stop on by and definitely check out their Patreon site. Dollar to enter a contest, seriously, once a month, that's awesome. And some of the books that you get are even better. So let's go on with my haul this week and see what we got. Uh, the very first thing is Avengers. Uh, this came out. I'm going to tell you, this was an awesome book. This is Avengers 13, and this is uh, Iron Fist uh, from 1 million BC. I'm going to be honest with you. I am so happy with this story, and we're being led to believe that the legend of the Iron Fist, maybe, or the Iron Fist, is maybe not as noble as they tried to make it sound on the Netflix show. It's actually from a rebel. Uh, my wife said that's a pretty uh, horrible shot of her jumping down. I don't really know but um yeah this was a great story about rebellion and caring and just yeah, virtue and where it all signal from it, it it was a great story i highly recommend checking it out you won't go wrong and you don't have to be within any continuity right now this got away as a, a one shot definitely right there in the same flavor as a uh, ghost rider from Wimby bc if you like that you're gonna really dig this too uh, next, Ivira, Mistress of the Dark. This is just Canty Banner being thrown back and forth over different uh, artisan landscapes um, of monster villainous with Faust and, of course, Vlad the Impaler. Uh, now they're in 1935 Hollywood at the making of a studio movie. Uh, of the months or the Bride of Frankenstein, along with other movies too. Great witty banter. Not get anything serious out of this. Um, kind of makes fun of its own uh, genre there for a little bit too, which became very interesting. I'm sorry, I have to drink some coffee. <laughs> All right, next, Gardens of the Galaxy. Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! This should be the hype of the year. This was awesome. It was great reading. Everything you want from a good Gardens of the Galaxy movie. You want that good cross between the old school comic, the new movies, and new flavor in there. And we got Cosmic Ghost Rider joining the team. Oh my god, this was just awesome. If you're not reading this, you are missing out. Get this, get this, get this. And it came with several covers, and I did, of course, because I don't want to disappoint. I got two different covers. And, of course, I had to go with this one right here as well. Uh, you see Cosmos the Dog on it. That's always been one of my favorite characters. And, I, first off, I love that cover. So, yeah. Uh, Gardens of the Galaxy. Rush out and grab them. You're gonna love it. Pick up the series if you haven't already. Next. Buffy, number one. Okay, if you like the original show from the 1996... 1997? That ran for, like, ever. Um... This is pretty much where you're at. It's pretty much a relaunch of that storyline and that type of Buffy, witty banter with cliffhangers at the end. This was actually a pretty decent read. Um, I recommend it if it's in your budget and, you know, there's other things that maybe you don't want. But if you've pretty much seen the show, you pretty much get the premise of this book right here. But still, not bad. 
Immortal Hulk, I'm really liking this. Uh, this is Immortal Hulk number 12. I'm really digging this whole hell and the narration of what a devil is or Satan or however you want to describe that and how it fits into the context of the story and Bruce Banner's father. And it's just really been just kind of a cool deal. I've really been enjoying this. Uh, it definitely makes you think, you know, and I like things that do that. Um, if that's something that you're into, definitely pick this up. Is there any deep, deep meaning behind it? No, I think most of it's just, just rantings. But, yeah, it was still pretty cool. Next, Shazam number two. Uh, what do we get in this? Billy Batson and his little superhero gang find a secret entrance to a subway place that takes you to many different worlds. And now we are in Funland. And we got King Kid, who basically tells him at the end that they he's supposed to be on their little uh, team there. Uh, kind of curious how that goes. We kind of got a suspicion that he's really a villain, but it, um, I believe it's a first appearance. I've never heard of this character before. If I'm wrong, leave a comment down below. Let me know I'm wrong. Let me know where I can reference his character in comic book lore. But, um, okay, I'm kind of digging it. It's, it's kind of jumps back and forth into some weird areas, but you know what? We'll check it out. We'll read a couple more copies of it. All right, for my disappointment for the week, we got uh, Superior Spider-Man. Yes, I know somebody just got mad. I, I felt the rage. I felt the rage. <laughs> All right, so what do we get here? We get a weirdo group of mercs uh, that don't really, that try bad puns. I guess it's some try to be funny with them being funny. That hashtag, sorry, not sorry, I'm going to make fun of my own genre. Uh, kind of mentality going on. We got Superior Spider-Man who tries to live up to his name and just when he's kind of being shown that he's not that superior becomes Cosmic Superior Spider-Man. An old love interest of Doc Ock is coming in to save the day as well with some robots and uh, I'll be honest, it was just too much going on in one comic book. I know that's weird to say about a comic book with panels but it was just a little too much, and I found the story weak at best. Um, so I'm not going to drop it just yet. I may give it a little bit more time uh, before I do, but I just was not overly impressed with this. It is what it is. Back to something good, American Carnage. Kind of digging this. This is a dark noir type story, modern noir, if anything, that we have going on here. Um, we got an infiltrated... Uh, half black, half white guy infiltrating a, um, well, what do you call them? Like clans, uh, white supremacy group. There's a politician behind the whole thing. This thing is getting deep and it's not getting deep in that weird way that makes people feel bad. It's getting deep like a crime story. Um, uh, this would make good television. That's the weird thing about it. And I'm still reading it and I'm not bashing it. Um, so that should tell you something because I'm kind of rough on that stuff. Um, but I'll, I'll follow this for a few more issues until, you know, something stupid happens and I just don't want to hear it anymore. Um, Teen Titans. The only reason why I bought this, one, because of this beautiful cover right here. Two, because the Teen Titans break into the Batcave and I just kind of wanted to see what that was like. Uh, in this book, we got a cool snapshot of the Batcave with its classic um, setting of the dinosaur, the coin, and of course the Joker's coin in it. Or Joker's card in it. Um, it was it's whimsical and funny at best. We get a little heart to heart from Alfred and um, a Robin at the time, or Damian Wayne. Uh, you know, and they kind of have this little banter about virtue, and they did it in this guise of high moral. Uh, virtue and that turned out to be a very interesting concept you know like where where do you get your high moral ground from because you get to wear a costume and, and, and act as such so where does it come into play well it comes into play with what red hood is up to which we were not revealed into this story yet so that is coming up so that should be very interesting there soon Next, Justice League number 16. Again, another cover swipe. I just thought it was a cool cover. However, what happened in here? Well, let's take a quick look at a hero that came back to D. Now, I remember this hero back a long, long time ago. And we get the return of Starman. Dun, dun, dun. And Starman's pretty much like Space Jesus. He can pretty much do anything. Um, so he's back in action with the Justice League, doing his thing. Other than that, um, we get some information about why the Hulk people are the way they are, what gives them their moral support or uh, seniority. Uh, we find out that there's another alien, which I'll be honest with you, every few years we find out that there is another Martian out there 
besides John Jones. So that, for some reason that was brought on as some big surprise in there. It wasn't. Um, in other words, this story was just kind of eh. So we'll see what they do next. Or maybe we won't. I'll be honest with you at this point. I think I could go without it. All right, new this week. Mm, Crypt of Shadows number one. This is in classic EC, old school comic book horror stylings. The art in it's that way too. We get told three stories. Or I'm sorry, we get told two stories that seem totally different. The third story brings it all together in a surprise. Dun, dun, dun. And it was just epic. It, it, pick it up for nothing else. Horror comic books have been something that has been faded out. Uh, from the mainstream, and they really do need to come back because they're just great stories and just classic tales. Kind of had the the stylings of a Tales from the Crypt slash I don't know Tales from the Crypt slash um, Shadow Horrors from back in the Golden Age and, and stuff like that. Like you really kind of got that feeling there, and it was really cool. Next, Freedom Fighters. Love me some Freedom Fighters. This is Freedom Fighters number two. We got the old team back, but as different people. We got Bomb Man, Doll Woman instead of Doll Guy this time. Uh, we got, oh, who else did we have? Black Condor. I mean, we just have some great characters in here. And they're all coming back. And Captain, or Uncle Sam is going to wake up. And then we got Plastic Man out there. He's a villain in this particular uh, universe. Man, just patriotic, you know? You know? Nazis took over, and this is, happens in the Nazi world of taking over the U.S. I think it's, I forget what it is, it doesn't matter, because it was such a great story to see the team come back together, updated a little bit, and yeah, it's a little bit more diverse, and some people can complain about that. Truth is, I don't care, I just like those characters and their powers, and I want to see them do really cool stuff by punching Nazis in the face, because that automatically makes a comic book good, period. Check it out. All right, next. Road of the Dead, man, this is what I wanted Walking Dead to turn into. I'll put it that way. You got tanks, you got bikers, you got cannons, you got zombies. Um, you got a guy that smokes a cigar and wears a Hawaiian shirt and smokes a weed every now and then. You got a black guy that speaks very urban. You got a white guy who's just an army guy who knows how to drive a tank and shoot it. And you got a lot of male testosterone, just fun stuff going on in this book. Oh my god, this has lived up to the hype. I've been enjoying this, and I'm going to continue on, even though they've made it to the island and been picked up and saved. And two of our heroes have been turned into kind of, sort of, zombies. They kind of took a serum. I don't want to ruin it for you, but you definitely got to check it out, and you'll have to pick it up from issue one in order for it to make sense. That I will tell you. This is not one of the comic books. You can just pick up in the middle of it. Next, Aquaman 44. Oh my god, somebody said that there would be an appearance in here. We actually ended up with 10 appearances in this. 10 appearances from different types of lords of the ocean, however they want to describe it this time. Very interesting stuff going on in here. Will the book ever gain in value or anything like that? I don't know. But the truth is, the cover's cool. We got some first appearances in here, and we got some coolness going on. We need to get Aquaman his memory back. And at the end, they were trying to drown him. What for? We'll find out. Uh, next, uh, finally, thank you, Uncanny X-Men Annual Number 1. We finally got a good X-Men story. I've been harsh on <laughs> Uncanny X-Men. I have been tearing that story up because it just makes no sense. And what do we get? We get Cyclops back, and we get a story that's really good. Thumbs up, approve of this. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Uncanny X-Men writer. Just thank you. That's all I got to say. <laughs> Finally got a classic X-Men story that I actually like. And we got Cyclops coming back. And he's not wearing that stupid cross thing. He went back to the visor. Kicking ass and taking names. It is just an awesome story. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. It feels good to talk about Uncanny X-Men since it's been so long. All right, next. Here it is. We got, uh, yeah. Batman number 63, and we got more mind games going on. Last issue was Pig, 
uh, torturing uh, Spider-Man. But now we find out what's actually going on. We find out that Scarecrow is actually um, hitting him with his gas and trying to make him go insane. But he's kind of liking this fantasy world. We get a John Constantine walking through it, trying to talk him out of it. And we get both the good and the bad of living in a fantasy world in your own head. Um, very powerful stuff here. Definitely suggest picking it up. And also, take a look at that cover. I mean, what's what's more Spider-Man than that cover right there? With Croc laying on the ground with his foot on him. Conquered. All right, next. Uh, let's talk about this one first. Burnouts. Love me some burnouts. This is really cool. However, this one does have a tragic... Killing of one of the heroes in it, Manny here, uh, appears to be committing suicide when it's the Asian and actually dropping him out. I did not think that this comic book would get that deep. Like, it would actually drop a body in it. Holy crap, it was a little bit of an eye-opener. But the team will have to rally around that and figure out a way to stop the aliens. We found out the aliens take over bodies and can actually multiply themselves inside the body. In other words, giving birth. Uh, we find out that yeah this comic book can get real when it wants to <laughs> and it, it got real like real uncomfortably weird um but it is what it is we're gonna keep on reading it next is naomi number one okay i didn't know anything about this book i'm picking it up uh we have some super superhero worship going on in here she's an adopted she knows superman everybody knows superman's adopted in this storyline uh and somebody in town might actually think that she's a superhero. She has a psychiatrist that she talks to and tries to figure things out. And we got a guy named Dee in town who might know something about her past. She doesn't seem to know much about it. Kind of, I don't know where this is going to go, but we're going to find out. I'll give it a fair shot. I'll give it a fair shake and report. But really, this isn't even an origin story. This is just an introduction to Naomi and her life, I guess. I don't think anybody cared, but apparently it's important to us. We'll find out in the next issue. And if it's not, don't you worry. I'll be sure to point that out and dog it out. All right, next, uh, War is Hell. This is a, again, back to the classics of the Golden and Silver Age, where war comic books were a regular thing on the little spindle magazine racks. We bring that back. And all this is being done for the great anniversary of these type of comic books. Um... So what do we got here? We got the romanticism of war. It kind of took away the actual, with the books, the way they were really in it and kind of had these aha moments at the end of them or to show that there were some kind of special incidents and in everything that happens in war. Uh, the first uh, story takes place in World War II with a German pilot and the last one I'm assuming is an Afghanistan or Iraqi story and it has a very kind of weird ending. Definitely suggest reading it. It's they're both good stories, no doubt. Uh, but these are not superhero stories by no means. And the graphics in it are kind of... The first story, the graphics weren't that good. The second story, they were actually pretty good. So, you know, people are testing out different creative abilities on this. Uh, but it definitely romanticizes war. And bam, chalks it in here for you. With some good story, I'm not going to lie. But um, I don't know. We'll, we'll see how they go. Hopefully they kind of pick them up a little bit and bring that up. Now, what is going on in the future, you wonderful nerds out there? Well, Wednesday's coming up. Let me know down below what you plan on picking. Um, I will be heading off to my comic book store to see what I can get. Sometimes they get things, sometimes they don't. I do the best I can. Um, looks like I'm going back to work Monday. The government decided to get back to work. So there I go. Uh, and, of course, we have C2E2 coming up in the end of March. I know myself and Spectacular Spider-Grandpa, we're super excited. We're going to be jumping in the car together and heading to Chicago, hopefully near you. As always, thank you for supporting my auctions. I do have another auction that is going right now. Link down below. Please take the time to at least check it out. You don't have to buy anything. Just let me know um, if my claims are true. If you are a comic book collector, there is something in there for you, definitely. Um, and if you're a comic book collector, I guarantee there's something in there. Uh, whether it's in our mystery polls, our lots, or single issues, pay the price that you want to pay that you're comfortable paying. You can always set that up. And it's a safe, secure credit card with a secured site behind it. Highly recommend it.
Uh, what does the money go to? I like being rich. I don't know. No, I'm joking. It pays for me and Spectacular Spider Grandpa's excursions out to Comic Cons and stuff like that. So we can pick things up and bring them back here to you, uh, the wonderful viewers out there. And, of course, if we ever meet you in town, we're happy to buy you a beer at one of our meetups. Still happy to do that. So, guys, uh, don't forget, Blaster Stash It tonight, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on YouTube. Uh, we're going to review some comic books, share some jokes, maybe. Maybe even have some rude banter back and forth with each other because that's fun. All right, guys, take it easy. Thanks again. Bye.